Hello, my name is Stephen Green. Here's my review of a Business Practitioner Journal article. For society to change, Ward argues, organizations must choose to implement a purposeful anti-racist strategy. The eight pillars that she labels make sense, and the logic of her reasoning appears to work for her organization, but there is no academic defense or theory applied to the problem on which her solution is built. I argue that the academic analysis is not necessary. Ward's article contains great value because it is immediate. It can be immediately understood and it can be immediately applied to evaluate an organization's anti-racist strategy. This is a value for practitioners. For instance, after reading the article, I explored my own organization. There was limited evidence of the foundational and functional pillars within Edmonton Public's policy and strategy statements on anti-racism and what is termed multicultural education board policy. Current initiatives on collecting race-based data do begin to fulfill Ward's demands for practices that consider perspective, performance, policy, and place. Using her principles then, it is clear that Edmonton Public up until this year did not have an anti-racist strategy that she would approve of and is only now developing one. Thus, Ward's article did prove to the have value by offering a framework with which to judge and evaluate EPSB's anti-racism initiatives. However, there is no theory provided to why this method would lead to real change or why these pillars are offered as opposed to alternative methods. This article is a practitioner writing for practitioners without addressing theory or providing an academic defense of her ideas. That doesn't mean it's not valuable. I argued that articles such as this may actually offer more value than an academic study of the same issue. Some issues are so immediate and so important that taking action now is better than waiting for later. Formulating a study that measures the impact of the pillar-based analysis, conducting the study, and then publishing the results of that study could actually make things worse by delaying action. A scholarly analysis can certainly provide complementary value but waiting for the results of that scholarly analysis may actually do more harm than good. To illustrate the point, consider the lack of any demonstrable change from the national inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Would the cause not be better served by an upswell of public indignation? Would not the popularization of action to initiate change 
be better than our recent national approach, which in my view was a lengthy analysis, some 43 months to get from the initial stages towards the final report, which was in itself a lengthy report in total of 1,080 pages, if you look at both volumes, that is yet to cause change. The value of the articles like Ward's is that they are more timely than their scholarly counterparts. And they can lead practitioners to evaluate and change current practice immediately. Thank you.